morning, Northern Michigan. I'm Rachel Blissett, and we are on top of the Mackinac Bridge because the St. Angus Chamber of Commerce is raffling off tickets so you can experience this for yourself. Kevin, every direction you look here in Lake County, you'll either see a fallen down power line or an uprooted tree like this one. I'm five foot one and it surpasses my height. Even when I put my hands up, you'll see trees like this uprooted throughout the entire county. We are currently on Belle Isle. We're just in one hour. Three men from Stand Up for Great Lakes will be crossing Lake Erie and it's all to donate and raise money for Cooperative Institute for Great Lakes Research. I'm here with Brad. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here. So first of all, what is Cooperative Institute for Great Lakes Research? And a northern Michigan business is doing its part to help workers affected by the partial government shutdown. Java Joe's in St. Ignace says they're giving members of the Coast Guard a free breakfast. We've been giving you a look at what the storm damage looks across northern Michigan, but now we're going to give you a new perspective from the sky. We are along Route 55, seven miles east of Cadillac, where you have just seen just trees being devastated by this week's storms. Whitney, hi. We are here in Gibraltar, where the Detroit River ends and Lake Erie begins. The paddlers are going to be here soon. They left Belle Isle around 9 a.m. today, headed towards Sandusky, Ohio, a complete 80-mile journey. Let's take a live look right now to where they're at under the tree. On average, one female salmon has about four to 5,000 eggs, and I'm going to fertilize it right now. There we go. Then we jump in a little bit of this solution. About 60 to 65 percent of these eggs will make it until spring. Good morning, Northern Michigan. We are at the Yankee Air Museum. Right now, I'm in the ball turret of a B-17 plane. It's a butterfly time in Northern Michigan, and I'm joined here with Cindy and Dr. Duke Elsner. But Cindy, I want to start with you. Sure. Can you tell me about the Butterfly House? Yes, the Butterfly House started six years ago. Adam Lauren, good morning. What a truly amazing experience. The paddleboarders are here back on land. I'm here with Quinn, Jeff, and Joe. Okay, Quinn, I'm going to start with you. Yeah. How does it feel to be back? Oh, man, it feels amazing to be on shore with all the family and friends. Yeah. It's perfect. What was the last night's journey like? Oh, man, we had headwind the entire time, which when you paddleboard, that's not really what you want. We were going really slow, and actually at one point, the headwind was on our break, pushed us faster backward than we were going forward, which was a bummer. But we had an amazing moon, uh, full moon last night, lit, lit our way the whole way, so yeah. it was awesome. What was it like leaving from Belle Isle and ending up here? Yeah, to, to start an urban paddle and like see the city and then the indus industry down the river and then get into the channel, have a freighter go by us, and then finally get to the open lake and have like 13 mile an hour headwinds right away. <laughs> we knew we were in for a treat, so. <laughs> you guys have finished less than 24 hours. That's a little bit shorter than what you expected. Uh, yeah, well, we heard you were here, so we, we booked it to get here for a morning live show. So. Well, thank you so much. Now, you guys have nearly raised $15,000 I'm here with Jeff. What does it feel like to be back on land? Uh, it feels good. It feels very good. Is it weird to kind of take your few steps off? Yeah, yeah, definitely feeling a little wobbly right now. So. What were some of the challenges that you guys faced last night? Um, the the headwind was the biggest thing, mm -hmm. just uh, paddling into the wind. Um, didn't really, it wasn't cold like some of the other ones we've had. Um, but just trying to stay sharp, uh, battle that headwind, and try not to fall in. When you guys started, you guys were kind of worried about the bug issue. Was there a problem out there on the lake? Uh, it wasn't bad. I think it was because we had a breeze out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a few here and there, but uh, we never busted out the bug nets that we brought along. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I'm going to go over here to Joe. Okay, so when you guys crossed the bend and you see everyone here, what was that feeling like? Oh, it's it's uh, great as always. You know, it's uh, it's fun seeing all your friends and family. You should pan and look at them. All. Yeah. Um, they're always uh, supportive, and uh, it's you know great to have everybody here. Well, there's a lot of people here, and congratulations to all three of you. So I'm gonna step out of the way because I think it's time to pop the champagne. They traveled 80 miles across Lake Erie, raising money for the Cooperative Institute for Great Lakes Research. If you're looking for more information on how you can be a part of their journey, head to 9 and 10newscom What an amazing time. Congratulations, guys. The Goodwill Street Outreach Program helped 427 people last year. In Antrim County, they helped 13 people. 16 
in Benzie County and in Grand Traverse County, 243 people. That's more than half of the people that was served and it's a problem that's not going away. Either he's still here or he's gone to Safe Harbor last night. Street Outreach is a program where we reach out to people experiencing homelessness and bring resources to help them end their homeless right where they are. Hello to camp. Hello, anybody home? For Ryan and his team of six, that means Hello. going beyond the streets of Traverse City and into the woods. The street outreach team literally hikes through the woods to find people or check up on those who need their help. Ryan has helped more than 1,000 people over his 12 years with street outreach. He started because homelessness is an experience that he knows all too well. I experienced homelessness for a time in my life as a teenager. And there were some people in my life that really helped me out. But to me, the thought of someone sleeping outside okay. really bothers me. So yeah. I do what I can to help people get connected. This is an active camp. During this mid-April search, he came across a new campsite with no one inside. We'll leave the, um... Sorry, I missed your note. So we can try to connect. When people like Ryan do connect with someone experiencing homelessness, they provide them with information on the Goodwill Inn, an emergency shelter with more than 120 beds. During their stay, Goodwill works to connect these people to things like housing subsidies. They've helped me in more ways than anybody can know. Donna Canfield was homeless for 20 years. I was raised in foster care and institutions. So it's like I continued it. I was institutionalized all these years, you know. And I feel safest at these places. The Goodwill Inn helped Donna get back on her feet. One of the common themes I see among people I serve is significant trauma in their lives, either as a child or growing up. It takes years for people like Donna to overcome the many hardships that come with homelessness. And that's why part of the street outreach program also works to keep track of people who still call these woods home. And that's his tent there. It's not very yeah. put together. Ryan's searching for a man named Gary who spent six months at the Goodwill Inn shelter. Hello to camp. Hey. Gary, how you doing? I noticed it's uh, it's me, Ryan. Oh. Because of the Goodwill Inn's long waiting list, residents can't stay for more than six months. For Gary, that meant returning to his tent. I'm just homeless. <laughs> um, no place to go. I have a couple of physical disabilities, so I really can't work. Ryan found Gary with wet socks and holes in his shoes. We don't normally bring people down here like this to do this sort of thing, but you're in pretty rough shape, man. Ryan took Gary to the Goodwill store because Gary had a voucher for new shoes. They also took this opportunity to get Gary on a housing waiting list. What would you say your, your biggest challenge would be? Surviving another night. <laughs> With warm new shoes, Gary's only choice was to return to his cold tent. And he's just one of the many that Ryan and the street outreach team have dedicated their time and resources to help. Something Ryan says he'll never stop doing. I keep doing this because homelessness is still there. No one should experience homelessness on our streets. If you would like to help people like Gary through donations or the street outreach program, we posted some information on 9in10news.com. In studio, Reagan Blissett, 9 and 10 News. For a total of 28 weeks, close to 17-hour days, over 100 recruits will dedicate their time physically and mentally to graduate from the 135th Trooper Recruit School to become a Michigan State Trooper. 5 a.m. sharp, recruits start their day. Marching one by one into place to get ready for physical training at 5.30 a.m. The workout is high intensity intervals meant to prepare them for the job ahead. You might be put in a physical altercation with somebody where your body is just exhausted to the, the point where you can't, don't think you can con continue. And then that's when the mental part kicks in. Following PT, recruits have 45 minutes to eat shower and get ready for room inspections, making sure both their partner and themselves are put together head to toe. No room for even a hair out of place. 
You're always looking out for each other and just that attention to detail could save your life or your partner's life at one point in time. There's hard work hitting the books, countered by the excitement of the drive track. They're teaching us some, some really interesting things and, and good techniques to drive, and uh, it's fun to kind of let loose on the drive track. You'll find the other squad back in the gym for their second workout of the day, defensive tactics. I'm a big hands-on learner, so a lot of the hands-on stuff that they put you through in the very beginning of the recruit school is very nice because I learned better that way. While recruits are still in training, their life outside the academy is still moving forward. Recruit Jeffrey Patterson's pregnant wife is due any day. Being away from my family is the hardest, for sure. And then uh, just the program in general, it's very demanding. But it's a program that thousands of state police troopers have all gone through. And the recruit class from the 1990s are about to retire, meaning there's positions that need to be filled, but not just by anybody. Somebody that with the utmost integrity, uh, very responsible behavior, somebody that's mature as well, that is dedicated and is willing to uh, put this uniform on day in and day out and do the job as a police officer. <laughs> Recruits from the 135th Trooper Recruit School are ready to join the rest of the state police officers that line these hallways on April 3rd, especially four of them from Manton. We'll tell you their story tomorrow on 9 and 10 News. Reporting in Lansing, Reagan Blissett, 9 and 10 News. The sport has grown so much over the years that now I think there is a community here that will support it. A center to call their own on East Traverse Highway in Traverse City. The facility will have bouldering walls to climb, yoga classes, and even a child care center. But there's still one piece missing. We've got the property paid for, we've got the building paid for, and what we're raising the money for is to get, uh, to build the wall within the building itself. So if the more support we can get for that, then we can create this great community space for families, alternative athletes, people who maybe aren't on team sports but really like to work out. MI Summit Climbing started a crowdfunding campaign last month. People can purchase discount climbing passes that will pay for the rock wall. Currently, MI Summit Climbing is at $30,000, but they're trying to reach for the top and climb for $50,000. But we thought about it for so long, it's scary to think, oh, what if it doesn't make it? <laughs> I think it will. I hope it will. I think the time is right for this now. They also hope the facility will be used to teach team building skills to at-risk youth, foster kids, and have summer camp programs. I climb because it makes me feel strong. It makes me feel connected to a really cool community. Um, it's just a different way of thinking through problems as you're approaching them on the wall. My Sunday Climbing wants to open their doors early next year. We have details on how you can be a part of the campaign on 9and10news.com.